Hello everyone. So in today's film, I'm going to be creating a look for you that is simply a refinement and a polish of the features. This look is also quite soft, it's quite feminine, quite glowy, and has a slight youthfulness about it, even though it can be worn by absolutely everyone at any age point. I am not going to be creating this look on myself, however. I have an absolutely gorgeous model with us today, and her name is Lucy Feng. Lucy is a photographer and a model, and I, of course, shall leave the pickup links to her website and to her social media within the description of this film. And I hope you enjoy the look. I began on bare skin, applying Chanel's La Blanc on a Tina Earnshot brush to the face and onto the neck. Then going in with Embryolis La Crème Concentrate, combining the two together, these two products will serve as our primer and a moisturizer. Dispersing the product with the brush, then massaging it into the skin using my fingertips, remembering to be particularly gentle around the eye area. Then I am applying MAC Cosmetics Face and Body Foundation in the shade N2, and I'm applying a liberal coat of that all over the skin and onto the neck on the same Tina Earnshaw brush. Thus just evens out the skin tone and reduces the appearance of any redness within the skin without concealing the natural skin completely. Then I am taking an Urban Decay Optical Blurring Brush and buffing and stippling that foundation into the skin to achieve and ensure a seamless finish. This technique also encourages the foundation to be at one with the skin. Then I am blending the product in underneath the eye and slightly more particular areas that require more precision when blending with a synthetic Zova 227V brush. Then I am taking the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Peach Corrector on a Charles Fox 8146405 brush and applying it to the underneath of the eye to reduce the appearance of under eye discoloration. And by using a peach toned concealer, this contrasts against any purple or blue tones within the face, reducing their appearance as they can often make us look slightly fatigued. And then at the outer corner of the underneath of the eye, I am then pulling the corrector upward and outward cancelling out the slight discoloration that we all get underneath our eyes at the outer corner. This is a marvellous trick for anybody as it just lifts the eyes upward and outward and as you can see that just brightens and elongates the eyes. Then I am taking the same corrector and applying that around the corners of the mouth just to brighten and uplift that area and then using the same corrector again just to conceal the blueness of a vein around the jaw area and blending that in with our synthetic Zova 227V brush from before and for broader areas going back in with our blurring brush from before blending and buffing the product ever so slightly. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Pro Longwear Concealer in the shades NC20 and NC30 mixing the two together to create a custom shade and applying that on the same Charles Fox 8146405 brush for which that we used before and applying that concealer to the underneath of the eyes and down the sides of the nose and round the corners of the nose to brighten to the underneath of the outer corner of the eyes to brighten through the center of the face and onto the jaw as well as underneath the lip just to brighten and build additional coverage and for the same purposes applying a slight amount of it to the forehead. And to ensure a seamless finish, I am going back in with our blurring brush as well as our synthetic 227 brush, stippling and buffing the product into place. Then I am applying Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Pearl. Using our foundation brush from before, I am applying that to the highest point of the cheekbones and then dabbing and blending it in with my finger. Using light tapping motions. Then I am applying a slight amount of it to the brow bone, to the bridge of the nose, as well as slightly through the forehead, the neck, a little bit of it on the chin, and a tiny bit of it at the cupid bow. This will give the skin a really natural and beautiful looking glow. I find this to be quite a marvellous product as you apply as much of it as you want and blend it in, and it creates a really seamless natural looking glow. Then I am taking Supercover's Ultimate Foundation in the shade 22 and applying that to the skin using the buff brush by Base Pro Artists and taking it from the ear into the face, applying it upward from underneath the cheekbone and ensuring seamless edges with our blurring brush from before, stippling and buffing the edges of the product. Then applying the product into the temples and taking it through the outer perimeter of the forehead. These steps just simply sculpt the features without having to use heavy contour and remaining fearless to go back in with our blurring brush from before just to ensure that all of those edges are as seamless as possible. 
and that there are no harsh lines. Then I am taking Elamasca's cream blusher in the shade Libido, simply stippling it on first of all, and applying that to the cheeks using a MAC Cosmetics dual fiber brush, and having a blurring brush at the ready to reduce the severity of the blusher, and ensure that it is at one with the rest of the skin. Then taking Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion and applying it to the eyelids using a clean Charles Fox 8146405 brush and dabbing it in with a fingertip. This shall serve as a base for the eyeshadow, as well as increasing its longevity. Then with MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Quarry, I am applying it on a MAC 217 into the socket and the outer corner of the eye, working it inward through the socket and sweeping it across the eyelid just ever so slightly, and building up colour intensity in the socket and the outer corner. I am then gently sweeping the colour upward and outward in the direction of the temple, buffing and blending through what we have applied with a clean Zova 227 brush. And I'm just applying the product very gradually, applying a little, then going back in and blending it, just so that we create a really soft gradient. And with the same quarry colour and our 217, I'm strengthening the socket for which that we built, and then winging it upwards slightly into the brow. Then, with MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Hawks, and with the same 217, I'm building over the quarry shade, which has served as our base and transition colour, buffing it across the eyelid inward, and securing seamlessness by buffing through with our Zova 227 brush, concentrating the colour through the socket and across the eyelid, and then just starting to wing the colour upward and outward, continuing by going in with MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Blackberry, and with the same MAC 217, buffing that over the eyelid, but remaining relatively close to the upper lash line. Then with an Inglot 80 HPS brush, I am smudging that colour into the upper lash line, granting us greater definition, then, on a Charles Fox 8146031 brush, I am going in with some of our Hawks colour from before, but just only at the outer corner of the lower lash line, and going back in and blending with our Silver 227, because if we were to take it all the way into the inner corner on the lower lash line, it will reduce the scale of the eye. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Carbon, and on a Spacing K liner brush, I am beginning to line the upper lash line, and then winging the colour out just ever so slightly, creating a cat liner. I am using Lucy's own eyes as inspiration for the shape. As if though the lower waterline were to extend upward and outward, I am simply following over where I have imagined it would be, if that were so. That is the guide for the liner. And then going back in with our Charles Fox 8146031 brush, and blending the liner for which that we have applied upward and outward just to simply soften and smudge the eyeliner. And then taking our Zova 227 brush from before, and then blending that black upwards into the socket, and blending it through into the eye via the socket. Gradually building up our shape and our definition, and simply building up in layers, working between our pencil brush and our blending brush. Then touching up our concealer, where need be. Then I am curling the eyelashes using Inglot Eyelash Curlers. Curling eyelashes flatters absolutely everyone, but particularly effective on those from East Asia, where eyelashes do tend to be much straighter. Then I am applying the Balm's What's Your Type Mascara with a disposable mascara wand. First of all, really working that into the root of the eyelashes for greatest definition. Then giving the full eyelashes a thorough coat of the mascara ensuring that they are really very blackened. Then I'm taking a MAC Cosmetics Lash Brush and simply painting the mascara onto the lower lashes, concentrating most of the mascara on the eyelashes nearest the outer corner of the lower lash line. Then very softly brushing through the mascara for which that we just applied to the lower lashes with a spoolie brush. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Studio Chromographic Pencil in the shade NW25 NC30 and lining the lower waterline, brightening the eye and concealing any slight redness for which is on the lower waterline. Then I am taking Barry M Lip Liner in the shade 13 and buffing this into the inner corner on the eyelid and on the lower lash line and blending its edges with a MAC 231 brush and building the product up gradually, 
continuing to blend its edges. It is an absolutely beautiful pale pink color. This shall serve as a base for the eyeshadow for which that we are going to apply next. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Pink Breeze and applying it on top of the pencil for which that we just applied. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete on a MAC Cosmetics 263 brush and just filling in the eyebrows. As I absolutely adore Lucy's natural eyebrows, I just wanted to strengthen their shape ever so slightly. Then taking some MAC Cosmetics brow set and just applying it through the brows liberally to hold everything in place. Then I am taking Super Cover Foundation in the shade 03 and just touching up any areas where there is still a slight presence of redness. Then I am taking these corner eyelashes, which are by an eBay seller, using duo adhesive to glue them onto the lash line. Once they are on, I am simply using the end of my tweezer just to position them upwards. This is a trick I use to elongate and lift the eyes, as eyelashes can either make or break a look. For further definition and greater intensity, I am applying a secondary set of eyelashes. Once you have eyelashes applied, it really gives you a gauge as to how much more or less makeup the look requires. I am further going in and intensifying the black flick for which that we drew earlier. I am then taking some bourgeois liquid eyeliner and concealing the lash band of the false lashes. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics lip liner in the shade Boldly Bare and I am lining Lucy's incredible lips just ever so slightly as I want the lip line to remain quite soft and natural looking. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Faux and really working that into the lips. Then on top of that I am applying a light layer of MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Plink. I am then neutralizing the blueness of the pinks with a slight amount of MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Jubilee and by layering many lipsticks I am able to create the perfect custom shade. Then touching up the base with our blurring brush from before. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Matte Bronze on a MAC Cosmetics 116 brush and bronzing up the skin just ever so slightly, taking it through the temples as well as through the contours for which that we applied earlier. And with the same brush, I am then taking Sleek Makeup Blush by 3 Pumpkin Palette in the shade Lantern and applying a dash of that to the cheeks and softening its intensity with our blurring brush. Then I am applying the Balm's Mary Luminizer on an e.l.f. small tapered brush to the highest points of the cheekbones, slightly upward to the temples and slightly on the cheek itself, building up quite gradually. Then I'm taking a slight amount of it onto the chin, slight amount of it onto the cupid bow, the bridge of the nose, and a slight amount of it on the forehead, but none in the center of the forehead. Adding a soft, slight sheen to the skin. Once all of the makeup is applied, at this point you are able to gauge what you might need and what you might not need. And I'm going back in with our Hawks color from before, with our 217, strengthening the socket and winging the color outward slightly, pulling and broadening the eyes apart. Then I am applying Laura Mercier's Invisible Pressed Setting Powder in the shade Universal on a clean e.l.f. small tapered brush, applying that to the sides of the nose, to the chin, to the central part of the forehead and near the hairline to simply reduce the presence of shine in areas where its presence is not required or desired. Then I am applying MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Ready to Party, which is this absolutely beautiful purpley pink duo chrome color. And I am applying it on a clean MAC 217 brush. And I am applying that as our brow highlight, as well as our inner corner highlighter. And I am applying it using small buffing motions, brightening these areas. Then I am applying a slight hint of it to the Cupid bow. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Clear Lip Glass Lip Gloss and applying a slight amount of it using a discontinued Revlon liner brush, completing this look. It is quite a glamorous, defined look, yet remains very soft and feminine, brightening and glowing. A simple, uplifting, polished look, suitable on everyone. And I think Lucy carried this look beautifully so. And just touching up a little bit of gloss, and that more or less completes the look. Well, thank you very much for coming. I hope you've had a nice time. Oh, not at all, John. I had an amazing time, and I love the look. It's beautiful. It glows. Bye, everyone.